the Honourable Member for Mississauga Streetsville. Merci beaucoup, Mr. President. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise and speak today on Bill C-23, the Fair Elections Act, which has been introduced by the Minister of State for Democratic Reform. Mr. Speaker, the Fair Elections Act will ensure everyday citizens are in charge of democracy by putting special interests on the sidelines and rule breakers out of business. The bill also makes it harder to break the elections law. It closes loopholes to big money, imposes new penalties on political imposters who make rogue calls, and empowers law enforcement with sharper teeth, a longer reach, and a freer hand. The Fair Elections Act will protect voters from rogue calls with a mandatory public registry for mass calling, prison time for impersonating elections officials, and increased penalties. It will give more independence to the Commissioner of Canada Elections, allowing her or him to have control over their staff and investigations, empowering the officer to seek tougher penalties for existing electoral offences, and providing more than a dozen new offences to combat big money, rogue calls, and fraudulent voting. It will crack down on voter fraud by prohibiting vouching or voter information cards as the only acceptable forms of ID. It will make the rules for elections clear, predictable, and easier to follow. It will ban the use of loans, which are often used to evade donation rules. It will repeal the ban on premature transmission of election results, upholding free speech and the realities of technology and communications in the 21st century. It will provide better customer service to voters and establish an extra day of polling. In the case of disagreements, Mr. Speaker, over election expenses, it will allow a member of parliament to present the disputed case in the courts and to have judges quickly rule on it before the chief electoral officer seeks the MP suspension. But what I want to really focus on today is something that I know my colleagues in this House are concerned about. We've all seen how big money can influence elections in other countries. And that is something that our government, this government, is committed to preventing in Canada. Our government is pursuing a principled agenda to strengthen accountability and democracy in Canada. It was our Conservative government that instituted a ban on union and corporate donations to political parties. And this total ban will remain. The Fair Elections Act will reduce undue influence, both real and apparent, of wealthy interests in the political process. The current rules on political loans do not meet the high standards of accountability, transparency, and integrity that is expected by Canadians. With the introduction of the Fair Elections Act, we are building on our flagship Federal Accountability Act by bringing greater accountability and transparency to political loans. Everyday Canadians are expected to pay back their loans under strict rules, and the same should apply to politicians. Big money from special interests can drown out the voice of everyday citizens. That is why Canada's laws strive to keep it out. The Fair Elections Act will ban the use of loans to evade donation rules. It will allow political parties to 
fund democratic outreach with small increases in the current spending limits while imposing tougher audits and penalties to enforce those limits. It will also make it easier for small donors to contribute more to democracy through the front door and harder for illegal back money, big money to sneak in through the back door. Some have used loans which are never repaid to get around the donations limit. If adopted, the Fair Elections Act will put a stop to that by banning the use of loans to get around donation rules. It will do this by requiring uniform and transparent reporting for all political loans. This includes having to disclose the terms of the loan and the identity of the lender. It will bring the practice of issuing loans to political candidates and to parties out into the light. It will make the limit for total loans, loan guarantees and contributions by individuals equal to the annual contribution limit. So a person with deeper pockets can't get around the contribution limit by making a loan that they never intend be repaid. It will ensure that if a candidate needs a bigger loan than the individual annual contribution limit, they will have to go to a financial institution or political entity, not just a friend with money. And the loan that they receive will have to be at a fair market rate of interest. No more favours in the form of sub-market loans from political friends. That day is over. It will tighten up the rules on unpaid loans. A candidate won't simply be able to walk away from a loan that they haven't repaid, which in reality turns that loan into a donation after the fact. If a candidate's loan is written off by the lender, the riding association or the party of that candidate will be held responsible for the unpaid loan. It will also put the political financing rules for party leadership contestants on the same footing as for other political entities. The current time frame, which is pre-event, will be changed to a per-calendar-year basis. In addition to closing political loans loopholes, this bill will also make sure that political parties are being diligent about ensuring they comply with the law for political financing. The filings that parties have to make regarding their financial affairs should go farther than simply giving the appearance that a party is in compliance with the rules. Canadians should know that the information is accurate and reliable. An auditor should confirm that this is the case. And these audits are important, Mr. Speaker, as some electoral expenses by parties can be reimbursed. But Canadians should have better assurances that taxpayer money to support our democratic system is only being spent under the right circumstances and only when the expenses are in full compliance with our electoral laws. This bill would increase the responsibility of the external auditor of political parties. It would require that they also conduct a compliance audit to assess the party's compliance with the political financing rules. The chief electoral officer would have to consider the auditor's assessment of whether a party has complied with the political financing rules in the Elections Act before he or she could certify that the party's election expenses are eligible for reimbursement. Canadians should also know what their political parties and candidates are spending money on, in particular when they are using voter contact services. This bill would create an obligation for, for political parties, registered associations and candidates to identify any expenses in their returns for voter contact services. Finally, the bill includes a strong financial deterrent to prevent political parties and candidates from exceeding the expense limits. The potential reimbursement 
would be reduced for every dollar they overspend by one dollar for every dollar that exceeds the maximum amount by less than five percent by two dollars for every dollar that exceeds the maximum amount by five percent or more but less than ten percent by three dollars for every dollar that exceeds the maximum amount by ten percent or more but by less than twelve and a half percent and by four dollars for every dollar that exceeds the maximum amount of twelve and a half percent. I expect the colleagues in all parties can agree that if the more you overspend, the more it could cost you in the end, that that is indeed an even greater incentive to ensure that the rules are followed. Now I've just spent a fair bit of time outlining this bill and how it will crack down on illegitimate election spending and close financial loopholes. But the fact of the matter is that campaigning in an election does take money. I know that. We all know that. My colleagues uh, in this place certainly know that. This bill would ensure that money that comes from the right place, from individual Canadians. It will help parties and candidates to fund their campaigns by appealing to Canadian voters. Increasing the annual contribution limit for individuals to $1,500 will also make it easier for small donors to contribute more to democracy through the front door. The bill would also increase the overall spending limit for national and local campaigns by 5% each. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, this bill is about making sure that the interests of Canadian citizens are at the forefront of our election rules. That means not only ensuring fair access to the electoral system and ensuring fraudsters and tricksters are caught, but it also means making sure that there is no place for big money to exercise undue influence. It means making sure political parties and candidates are complying with the political financing rules. And it means making it easier for Canadians who want to contribute financially to our democratic system to do so. This bill puts Canadian voters first. And as we are at second reading of the bill, Mr. Speaker, I encourage members to support this bill at second reading, to get this bill before the Procedure and House Affairs Committee of which I'm uh, pr pleased and honoured to be a member of. I suspect we will have uh, many organizations and individuals come forward and speak to the bill, and I look forward to their input. I look forward to their ideas and suggestions. And I look forward to making sure that when we pass the final version of the Fair Elections Act, that it will stand up for fairness, transparency, and it will be a great act to ensure the voting rights, the democratic rights of each and every Canadian are respected. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Here, here, here.